it's Jane. Sorry, tech issues, you knew it. <laughs> right, I still can't do, um, my other camera is still out, so I can't say hello. Hello. <laughs> but we're here, it's uh, New Year's. It's actually New Year's Day here for some of you. I think it's New Year's Eve. Happy New Year. I've decided that 2024, it's going to be a year of colour for me. And I am kicking it off with something really amazing to show you. Now, these are, I'll just go straight into it. This is the new Huphoria paint box. What we need uh, in my collection of everything, art supplies, is a, a new, like a beginner's set, um, like... Well, not a beginner set. Like that's just that's a bit of the gives you a bit of the wrong idea because a usual beginner set you you know usually can be a bit crappy, but this isn't crappy, of course. Um, now, have I even got one near me? Uh, my original tins of watercolors. The little um, oh, I've taken my set upstairs. Okay, you know the little just oh great oh, I was too too far away to grab. Okay. The little, I've got a blue tin, a gold tin and a turquoise tin and in these little pans of watercolour, oh what's that? And that has been a staple in my collection but we don't have them anymore, they're all gone. The brights have all gone, I've got a few neutrals and a few of the glitzy left, that's it. But I know all of you just about have them. But there are new people coming to watercolour all the time and we need a kick-off set so that people fall in love with watercolour. And then they can expand with the colour library and, you know, the fairy dusts and the welcome mats and all the other watercolours that we have. But we need that initial set. So what I thought was rather than doing a mixing set as your beginner set or your kick-off set, you really need all the colours because when you're first starting watercolour, you don't want to be mixing the colours. You want all the colours just there, ready for you. So that is what the paint box is. So, well, that was the original intention and I wanted to get the weight down and just make it as simple as possible. So this is like a, it's very similar to this. If I could have used one of these, I would have because I love this palette, uh, but it's, it's not deep enough. This one's fantastic. Um, you've actually even got a little bit of space. No frills, no frills, no tin. If you want to pull these out, put them in on another tin, you can. You can add a magnet, put them in. Um, just a fantastic set. I'll swatch out the colours for you. It comes with, just look at, I just love it. So much. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so this is the colours painted out here. Uh, we might do that again, I think. And the swatch card that it comes with, I've painted on this one. But as the names, Hugh Foria, like Euphoria, obviously, it's a pun. But colour makes me euphoric, so that's about right. And uh, this is the, the puns of colour. So I had to come up with 44 colour puns. So proud of myself. Uh, I think they're hilarious and they're all tongue in cheek, but just as a little uh, example, uh, we have uh, Too Too Much. So that's this gorgeous one. Too Too Much. Uh, Pinky Promise, Tickled Pink in the Pink. So popular because it's a great colour. Love blooms, purple rain, mauve over, mauve over. I just think I'm so punny and funny. Oh my nails, whoops. Sea party, like a tea party, but you're in the sea because you're a mermaid, obviously. Laguna tick, <laughs> weed, love that. It's weed green. In a pickle, leaf of absence. Sage advice, happy. <laughs> Lime, all yours. Oh, I've had so much fun creating these. Uh, fun shine, yellow, because it's yelling at you because it's very bright. 
Hey you, put it in neutral, Beijing, <laughs> just peachy, and blushed. Oh, which was the worst one? Oh, this one, Carrotstrophic, this bright orange, because it's not catastrophic, it's Carrotstrophic, all fired up, caught red-handed, feeling cherry-ished, skin in the game, soil tycoon, like an oil tycoon, but it's earth brown. <laughs> oh, love you, marooned. Anyway. I'm going to show you them and the print of them isn't as bright as they are in it was very very hard to capture watercolor uh, as a print the originals always look better but you've got a little swatching card here and you can open this up and just paint some other types of swatches there some little words of wisdom and that little booklet comes with your little watercolors like so love it right so that goes there of course you can use the inside of the tray as a mixing palette um, this is one I've been using um, yeah there you go um, the watercolors as with all watercolors sometimes the pans aren't perfect like there might be an air bubble or this or that makes no difference to the quality of the uh, paint but I'll show you them and you can see that some have more of a matte texture some have more of a gloss texture and you'll see um, when they're on the page you, they're not glossy or matte it's just it's just to do with the formula and the way that they're sitting in the pan some pigments dry flatter uh, like these you would also have noticed that in layer cakes from time to time these don't have any metallics or any of that sort of stuff but you could add a bit of pickle pibble Pickle pe oh my gosh, pebble pigment, oh my gosh. Pick a pick up a couple of pickles and you can add a bit of shimmer shimmer if you want to. Right, so I have to be very careful with this journal because she's got secrets in it. Mm. I just uh, That was just a particular page after I came back from Japan. No, I haven't, can't show you anything else. Okay, so... Let's do some swatching. I think that's the best way to show you these things. Uh, yes, it is a whole new language, Debbie. If we're going to use our grey matter, little white lies, black market, earthly delights. Oh, that's anyway, it's, it's all in fun. But I've also got to tell you something else. Uh, because this is what we... Oh, I wish I had... The, oh, I'll set it up on here. I'll do it. This is playing around with the colours. Um, so, okay, let's just do it. Got my hot pink shirt on. Oh, hot pink linen. Mm, so nice. Right, now this is not watercolour. This is one of the pigments of imagination. And I'm just, I'm just going to assume you've never been here before. I'm just going to quickly show you. Pigments of imagination, there's 24 colours. There's 12 in a set. There's warms and cools. And um, the reason I do things in sets is so that you don't have to get everything at once. You can get this set and then you can get that set once you, you know it. And it just allows for budget and that sort of thing. So this is Nymph. This is from the warmer set. I can't remember if it's one or two. I think it's one. And uh, this is just a really great mid skin color that you can make lighter or darker the pigments of imagination are waterproof inks they are water uh, fountain pen friendly uh, as is evidenced by i've got willow wisp in here so what i've done here is i've got a little bit of nymph and a little bit of willow wisp here what makes these so cool is because they're waterproof i'm just going to put these this down this is just something i'm really into over christmas i've been having just painting time my mum has been here all of her, there was a big storm where she lives and all of the power of the whole region just went out. And uh, so she's been staying here. We've just been doing art, art, art. And uh, I'm just, this is just something I've been doing and I'm just fully into it. You know, when you're into something, so that, anyway. This is what I'm into. So this is what we're doing. So I like to start off with just a little bit of, Oh, I might even give her a neck. No, I'm going to give her a frill. I'll give her a tiny bit of a little bit of neck here. Just a hint of neck. 
because I've I like having this little waterproof layer first and then do whatever I want to do. So I'm going to put swatches on this side. Nice, neat. <laughs> we all know that that's not true. Um, they'll start off neatish and then it'll just go crazy. But it always does and I don't care. So it's my swatch book and no one can tell me otherwise, right? I've got my Dame Judy Drench sponge here. Is an ant? <laughs> Sorry, boy, you gotta. You can't be going on my watercolors. So I've just put that down, let that dry, and then I like to lay the other colors on top of it. Mm. And do you know what? I'm just gonna treat myself because the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Because, because. Um, this is one of my glass dip pens. Take take a dip and just so into the dip pens. Um, I bought a beautiful dip pen when I was in Japan, but I love the glass ones. I, I, I love my one that I got in Japan, but I don't use, I just like looking at it. Um, I like my glass dip pens. And we've totally sold out, and I've just created a whole new collection of them. So they will be coming just a little bit later in the year, so not to worry. In the meantime, you can actually just even use a stick from the garden. So now why am I doing this? This ink is not quite dry yet and I love the effect of uh, using the glass dip pen. It kind of scratches the paper a little bit because it's so hard and I, I, I kind of just love it. Um, I'm just super into it right now. And I'm just going to scratch in a little face here. And my New Year's resolution, uh, if we have such a thing, is to just enjoy myself as much as possible with colour and with my art. And uh, I was listening to David Bowie and, you know, just about taking risks and just doing as an artist what it is you need to do so I'm just doing that now that's all a bit of a mess that is for sure and I just need to lift the tip of her nose up a little bit it's all a bit funny now I could just do have done do this with watercolor as we go along but like I said it's just it's what I'm into at the moment so that is Pigments of Imagination, that is Little Nymph. Uh, and they're all named after Figments of Imagination, you know. I love naming things. I suppose they're not very serious names either, so people might think um, unimaginative people might think it's all a bit silly, I guess, but they're not my people, so that's all right. Now, Euphoria. Obviously, I have that. Uh, we open up the pan. I've used mine a little bit. It's not pristine. Can you cope? Or should I use a brand new one? Oh, now, live. This is live on the website now. There, it's already up. You can get it. Forty-four colours, and it's uh, forty-nine dollars Australian. I don't know. That's thirty dollars or something US. Amazing value and. Uh, because this is, I want this as a beginner set. I want this to ignite people's love for watercolour. Um, to put you into euphoria. That's the whole purpose. I'm just, I'll state it blank. I'll state it out loud. Might use the brand new one, just because it's a brand new year. I'll use this up anyway. Uh, these aren't half pans. They're like two thirds pan. Um, or th uh, Two-thirds, yeah, two-thirds of a half pan. Now, if you're new to watercolour, that's going to be plenty. Um, you can always refill these. Um, anyway, I'll show you. So what all I've done there is just spritz this. It's not completely necessary to do that. Uh, but what that does is just activate everything so it's just a bit quicker to use. Now, this colour here, obviously, hello, 
I don't know if it's just me or if I just think everyone will love this the most. Oh, I've got a popcorn hair on there already. Popcorn's my little dog. Um, I shall remove it because the hairs shall end up in the bending. Excuse me. This colour is just, I'll just pop it here for a start. It's just gorgeous. Look. Oh, it's actually cooler than that. It's just, this is tickled pink. And I know you're going to burn through that colour. I know you are. I've been watching the people. I've got my little coterie of people who do a little bit of testing for me. This has gone bare immediately because it's just a beautiful colour. We don't have it in the rest of the collection. And, um, oh, okay, so great beginner's colours, but also, <laughs> hello, if you are a, you know, Davin Peep, and you love colour, these are different colours than what you've had before, of course. It's got your back, don't you worry. So, But you don't have to have them, it's just that they're here they are, ready for you. Now, of course, you can't see the white on the white, so what's the point? But we'll see it later. I'll pop it in here. Pop, pop, pop. White always needs a little bit more activation. Now, watercolour white is always... Um, it might start off quite bright, but it always softens off because it's going off into the rest of the watercolour. If you want a bright white ink, a bright white look, layer cake. Um, I can't see my little individual. There she is. Even if you don't want to try the rest of the layer cake, you could do just this one. I'll just show you the comparison. But this will always be a softer white, but that we don't always want things to be full on. We want, do want things, we need soft whites, we need bright whites, we need everything. But this is going to give you just a, a white that sits up on top of your watercolour. Um, white watercolour never is going to do that, it's going to be quite soft. That's all right. We, that's fine. Now let's give, um, now when I'm doing my swatching, I should count it out and work out so I can fit all the colours on. Probably won't be able to fit them all on. I'll miss some. Because there's 11 colours in each row, it's a lot of joy there. And then whatever's left over from my brush, I'm going to uh, pop over into my little painting over here. Oh, I might put that white in her eyes now. So if I start the colours here, they'll go up and up into greens. Do I do a rainbow? I'm not sure. Just do higgledy piggledy. I'm just going to wash my brush out over here. I'll have my darker colours down here. I'll work it out later. Okay, so I put my little a little face or a subject on my washing out page next to my swatch page. I end up with a nice picture, but it, I also end up with space for the face without colour everywhere underneath it. So that can be quite nice, you see. So rather than let things be linear, I'm just I'm going to let things be as they are. So I'll pop that there. So this is little white light, grey matter, grey area. We're into the black market now. Might even give her a little bit of... So this is going to bleed a little bit, but that's, that's going to look quite... Oh, sophisticated and attractive, that's fine. Pop a little bit of, oh wow. Now the colours are popping. The colours are popping. Okay. Let me look at comments. Yes, I did share a moment with David in Japan. So I was just like talking about my good friend David Bowie, you know. <laughs> we sat on the same chair. 40 years apart, actually, oh my gosh, 60. 60 years apart through time and space, our bottoms collage. This is Earthly Delights, appropriate. Uh, this is marooned. Oh, does it say? It's like a lovely marooned brown. Oh, I forgot to put a little bit over here. Let's pop it in her eye region. So that pigments of imagination will be drying out, but it still wouldn't be dry yet. So my watercolours might bleed a little bit into it. It should be very nice. I like, we love that for her. And see where I've scratched the pen, the dip 
brush uh, that's permanently scratched the paper so those details are like in there like pen lines but it looks different and I'm just I'm just into it I'm into it now this is where the only downside of this incredible palette is when you're swatching out you have to I have to count all the time one two three four five six one two three four five six seven ratio And the brushes that I'm using is only my favourite brush of all time. This is the Ontour 12. Uh, is it my favourite brush? It is just my favourite. Oh, can't really say of all time. Let's just say today. Okay, today. The swatches are already crazy. Okay, all good. But look at the colours. Look at these pretty colours. Okay, now I need to layer them. Even these little neutrals. Look at that. I love you. Look at her. Where is she? I love you. Oh, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm very into Olive at the moment. I love you. Uh, this was unbelievable. So I was actually, I don't know if you've if you ever used chat GBT or these AI things. So a friend of mine was showing me how that works. And it's amazing. Like I've, um, I like to use it as a sounding board sometimes because sometimes it comes up with the funniest things and it doesn't quite understand puns, right? So, and coming up with 44, I needed all the help I could get. So, I this is skin in the game. I'll just pop this one down as I'm talking. So, I'm putting in word puns and it came up with a few, but then like for all of the browns and things, it was getting, it's starting to get quite difficult. And because um, I wanted them to be upbeat, I wanted them to be um, to relate to the colour and to be euphoric, or etc. And oh, I'm so happy. Um, yes, as I was reading them, there was some, and it was t just didn't understand the assignment. I wasn't giving it the right questions, or it just it just wasn't funny. Oh my gosh! Anyway, as I was looking at the stupid things that it was coming up with, <laughs> sorry. Um, I was like, this is unbelievable, unbelievable, and I ran around the room screaming uh, because I thought it was so funny. Why are the hairs on this? Okay, this is so soil tycoon. See, I think that's funny. It's funny. I know some people don't like puns, but oh, speaking of puns, oh, I didn't wash my brush out properly, so I've got some. Oh, I've got a bit of. Uh, the colour from below. Oh, now because these are a soft watercolour, which are easier to use, I find, you must store them flat. You can't store them like this because when it's hot, sometimes the colour can move. But um, that is true of most watercolours. Uh, even these I tested. This is the colour library because I do store these upright. These are solid enough that... They don't do that, but just tan watercolours are best usually stored or laying flat. Having a little rest in between uses. Let's give her a nice little blush. Now, because I've used this waterproof ink as an underneath layer, nothing's going to move. So this is a very good technique for if you're newer to drawing faces and you wanted to create on this sort of clean paper like on a clean um a clean look without um uh, color behind it already and this is going to let you layer things up and you're not worrying about what's under like what's happening underneath because if this was watercolor on under watercolor i'd have to wait for it to be bone dry and even then we can get a little bit of the, the watercolour comes alive again. And when you're working on face, especially if you're new, that can be a little bit... Uh, lead, to, lead to results that you weren't quite wanting, let's just say. So uh, this is just... It's another little method um, that I've kind of created because I can create my, my own art supplies, you see. So we're up to just peachy. Oh. And I've added a little bit more there. I mean, we have 
Uh, even what? Uh, even swatches? Even just once, Jane? No, we cannot. Do you know what? I'm just going to do something else. I'm going to, do, I'm going to just lean into the craziness of my mind and these are just I don't want neat watercolors I want crazy watercolor so this is just peachy sorry I made you guys so small up there this is Beijing which again I thought this was, I was very funny if we let this um, always with watercolour, when we put our colour down as one thing, but if we let it put more water on it, we're going to get a different little friend. So Beijing is a very, very neutral little, a uh, little bit warm, nice little beige colour. Uh, this is Buff Unary. stray hair on my brush that I can see this is put it in neutral this is not very riveting I'm sure but um, I, there's few things in life that I enjoy as much as watching I just love it oh I'm actually going to put that next where was I love you here and once you learn your pans you don't you just know where every color is because all of these colors here they look very dark now I'll just show you something with watercolor look at all these this is the um, color library and the other the original um, brights pans you can see how this these almost look like black squares all here these are all black squares but this is what the colors are it's just that it's a very translucent formula. It's a translucent watercolor. Look at the like. Look how dark they look. But this is what they do. And these all look black, but they're all of these you know dark colors. But they're beautiful translucent watercolors. Um, these ones because it is as I wanted this to be a set. That's just you just walk into it and use it, and it does kind of what you think it's going to do. The formula is allows for them to be brighter in the pan as well. So and so that they are these sorts of colours, which until you're you know have a little bit of expertise can be a bit confusing for new uh, watercolour artists. One, two, three, four, five, six. I told you I have to count. One, two, three, four, five, yes, six. Oh, these colours. Okay. Uh, and this is that was put it in neutral this is rock solid now we're going to pop into cream of the crop which is going to be very very light when I put it here but when I put it over other color we're going to get some again you've got to work just work it just a little bit if you want a bit more color to be quite light on here and let's mix it with this one as well yes I could use the mixing tray but I don't want to uh, so I'm going to use that with both oh, I've got a hair a stray hair in here oh, I'm just going to snip it off because it's annoying me where are my good scissors my Japanese scissors Start building the whites up in the eye and around the eye because then these will sink into the watercolor a little bit and just be soft and I can build that up and this is going to be a nice entree into the world of watercolor and the nice thing about watercolor is because it's water soluble see how this has dried with quite a harsh edge 
if I don't want it to have a half edge, so I quite like the harsh edge here, but I, if I want that to be softer, I can come over like this. And I don't have to worry about that under layer because it's the pigment of imagination, it's waterproof. So I'm not going to end up with a complete hole in my colour there. Just the watercolour is moving. As long as I don't damage the actual paper, like rub it too much, everything will be fabulous and fine. So you can hardly see the cream, but it's the cream of the crop. Um, so bananas. Beautiful bright yellow. Oh, I'm think, I think I've forgotten to put some of these colours in here. Oh, well. uh, this is honey bun. <laughs> this is just a bit warmer. And of course, when we mix our colours, um, we're going to get uh, lots of different things happening as well. This is Behave. Oh, Behave. Lovely bee yellow. So we've got this nice little gradual transition. And in the neutrals, we've got neutral neutrals right, going through very peachy, more warmer neutrals, this is more than neutral, greener neutrals for olive skin. And then we've got all of that beautiful darker skins with different undertones as well. And, of course, you can mix them. And, of course, you can mix your colours from scratch as well. So we've got mixing colours in here as well. So that was Hey You. And then we're jumping up again into Yellow. Hello, it's oh my god, that color. I'm gonna put a bit of it over that. Yum. Uh, sunshine. Oh, I didn't wash my brush out very well there. Now, I've got it here. There's the hair that's annoying me. I've got it. I'm going to... It just wants to move in its own direction. And... I'm not here for it. Thank you. Pluck it out like a little um, naughty Irish brow. Okay, so that was fun shine. Look at these beautiful colours. Look how translucent and gorgeous they are. Okay. Now, um, these are different to the colour library in the pigment load and just the formula in general. There's all sorts of things we can do with watercolour um, when we make them. Oh, this colour. This is orange glad. <laughs> orange is so glad. Oh, that is a nice colour. Um like a vermilion like a almost going into the reds oh, let's get into this one this is carrot strophic look at that color mm. okay is feeling cherished, cherished. See what I did there? And here is caught red-handed. So who? Well, have, have people picked out a, a name or a word or a type of year that you want to have? I am. Um, I'm just declaring this year of colour for myself. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, this is the one that's in here. We're in this one. This is caught red handed. I'm going to put this darker red in here. Oh, I might connect these two. Maybe I have the warmer colours on this side, and I might do my blues and greens on that side. 
rather than going rainbow, I might do something a bit different. Um, oh, and in the group, I've just posted, I've nearly reminded myself about six times, but look, I'm actually doing it. Uh, I've just posted the prompts for this uh, month, and this is January, because we're in January, and rather than, last year we had January, and I did live streams every day, because we, it was a continuation of Artvent, and, uh, but this, we're celebrating Jane Austen. Now, I know that Bridgerton is not Jane Austen, uh, but there are many movies, many books, many creative works that are inspired by Jane Austen. So you can be as well. So some of these are not exactly Jane Austen, but it's that vibe. Running across the moors is more of a Wuthering Heights thing. So, but I love drawing my people running across the moors. So we have them. <laughs> Thank you to Kerry for helping with this greatly. And this you can approach creative prompts however you fancy, whatever it brings to mind. And you can, uh, if you're using any of my art supplies, you can come and show us in our group. Um, you can join the group even if you don't have any of the art supplies. It's just posting work um, because it's a Jane Davenport group, obviously. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we've got, um, we want to have, it's, you know, using artwork, using at least some Jane Davenport art supplies in it. Uh, although you're very welcome to leave comments and chat and be part of it until one day you get them and then you can post your artwork in there. So we had All Fired Up in a Jam, which is this delightful red. This is Sugar High here. My mouth just watered. Uh, this is a very pink red. And we need a bit more of it uh, to pop around in here. And I'm just sort of doing, I think of this as a stained glass window technique. Um, this is tickled pink. This is the one where there are two, you actually get a, a spare pan. Um, and the reason I did that was also so I could use these, but I could also put that particular pan in with my other <laughs> set so that if I just had to take one or the other, I still had this colour with me because it's such a bright, cool pink and it's different to my other pinks. Uh, so the hot, hot pinks are cooler. That's this is the coolest one. I think that's Fairy Tale from the first collection. I might be best friend actually. It's one or the other, and it's like an opera rose. Uh, but it's just a different colour. It's just it's a, a it's neon in a cool pink way. It's a real magenta, let's say that. But the colour is called tickle pink. I'm just gonna pop a bit more. Tickle it a little more. And we need lots of it on here. Ooh, the colours when they stain glass one over the other, divine. I'm going to pop a little bit more of Go Bananas down on here too. Just to warm everything up on this side. Oh, and let's do some more sunshine too. Especially over the reds and pinks. Just to get some nice little layers. And I might go a bit of peachy. Just peach in between. So we need a little bit of a base. Oh, and let's do, not the greens, but let's do, might go a bit in here too. Oh, yes. I just want a bit more um, coverage. I'm just looking for colours that will let the bright ones just still keep twinkling. Let me have a little look at comments, make sure everything's going okay. Oh, everyone's talking about their birthdays. Yes, colours. Pam says, these colours make me feel youthful. Aww. And euphoric. <laughs> oh, okay. Right.
righty, righty, righty. Yes, yeah, so we've got neutrals, yellows, oranges, pinks. We've just started the pinks. I'm actually going to give these another little squirtation of the Mr. Mr. Bottle. Now this is a very soft little ballerina in here. Uh, this is in the pink. And again, I, I looked at um, uh, a colour spectrum and how colours apply to emotion. And uh, oh my goodness, colour is so individual. See, when I see pinks, I think of creativity, happiness, Japan, um, which means happiness to me because I had so many happy holidays there. Um, oh, it, it, like pink is joy, yeah, creativity, happiness, girlhood, youth, um, Barbie and all of that. She in, in tales, um, which for me is sort of like empowerment, play, fun. And all of our responses to everything are so different. But for some people, ah, pinks were the colours of depression and, you know, like people were talking about colour and psychology. I was just like, what is going on? What did pink ever do to you? Anger, rage, what? No. But that's just me. See, and blue to some people is like sadness, um, you know, depression, um, feeling teary, la la la. It's the colour of the ocean. So for me, it's mermaids and joy and walking the dogs on the beach. So it's it, a colour is so different for everyone. It's quite amazing. Even I was looking. My mum has her journal of colours and even how she sees some colours, I'm like, what? The way some people perceive orange is very strange to me, wouldn't be strange to them. Look at this beautiful purple. Okay, so colours, are, we've talked about our pinky promise, too, too much because, you know, ballerina pink, love blooms, so popular. Oh, and I haven't put any purples in my little drawing. Okay, so purple can join the two halves because purple is made from a warm colour, red, and a cool colour, blue. So purple is, it's of both worlds. It's warm and cool, which is what makes it purple. Purple is just a marvellous creature. These are warmer purples we've got on this side. And the cooler purples are starting here. So this is a bit of a warmer purple. <gasps> it's so pretty when it layers on, oh, oh, on the browns. Mm. I don't know why I love purple so much with the browns. And now we're starting to go into cooler purple. So I'm going to pop a little bit of that one over here. This is Violet Femme. So I've got all these beautiful colours to play with. This is a great set for travel. Or a compact workspace. Uh, just because you've got so many colours all in one little thing. Oh, this is going to be good for eyes. And just little shadows in general. Uh, so this was the, so we had Violet Femme, Purple Rain. Uh, then we're going into Move Over, Move Over. I thought I was, I think that is so funny. But, you know, I like puns, so. That was me. And I'm the one naming them, so. These soft colours. I know some people might be like, oh, no, we only want vivid brights. In reality, <laughs> it's 
very much easier to paint with softer colours. It's If you've ever had a makeup palette or a blush, an eyeshadow, and you go to use the colour and you say, oh, this is lovely and pigment, then you, go to, you put it on and it's like, whoa, clown, instant clown face, and it's not what you're after. But, yes, it's got the pigment. It's got that pigment load. But, you know, you kind of, it's a little bit harder to work with. That's what makeup artists want because they know how to, you know, control that and work with it and tame it. Same thing can be a little bit true of watercolours or this purple. We don't have this purple in anything else. Of course, you can mix a purple. You can mix any of these colours, but they're just here for you already. But this is a very nice colour uh, for adding depth to a face without adding darkness. Well, it adds darkness too, but it definitely adds a little bit of depth. Drama, if you will. I'm going to soften that back out. This is the joy of watercolours. You can do what I'm doing here. You put down your watercolour and then you use your water as a shaper. Your brush. A bit of a shaper. Now we're starting to go into our blues. This is just a gorgeous colour. This is called Inceptional. Oops, that was the wrong one. Look at that. And what I could do is just wait for these to dry off and then I can always come in with a second layer as well because you can build up the colour as you can in all watercolours. Uh, this is Dream Genie. Dreamy blue. And this is Sky High. So we've got the starts of our blues. Oh, which reminds me, I've got to buy Blues Fest tickets. <laughs> We have a music festival here called Blues Fest. And last year, uh, there had been a lot of rain and it wasn't run that well and took a long time to get in. And I missed the band I went to go and see, but I could hear them, so what else? Okay, is that dry enough for me to put my little card up here? This is Waving Hello. you know it's an ocean blue um, color, oh and yes so the color purple obviously I have to save that for the color library Debbie but I that is actually something that's happening So the, the <laughs> challenge for me is to come up with names that are part of a theme, part of a experience, and it has to be something you haven't used before, um, and yeah, it has to sort of yes live in in the world, this world that I'm creating we're creating with each other oh look at these blues i'm just going to i might use clean water actually i'm getting a bit mucky ducky over here some people might say but why do you have four aquas why do you have five purple why can't you just have one purple well you can have one purple that's fine you can live with one purple that's wonderful well done for you but that's that's not my that's not my journey <laughs> that's not my wish in life I want all the purples and all the blues and all the pinks and all the yellows and all the reds I want it all and this palette you have it all and you have it now but yes, of course, you can mix your colours, but especially for new people to watercolour. 
Oh, I keep dropping water on it, getting nice, nice little water dots. Actually, I don't mind them, but I was miss more pristine person that might. Oh, I forgot about you. Look at you. So now we're starting to go into turquoises. Oh, but I can't get, let you get bigger, even though you deserve to be a big swatch. But let me do you over here then. Oh, you beautiful thing. Oh, you have turquoise eyes then. Oops, that was a bit much. This is watercolour, I can just come and do that. Just give it a little bit of a shadow under the nose there. Okay, where are we up to? I can't remember. I think here. So this was um, waving hello. What you saying? What you cyan? Okay. Ugh. Some of them are terrible puns. Okay. Deja blue. Buoyant personality. You know, like a buoy in the sea. Buoyant blue. Oh, this was my favourite one. Blue tea pageant. <laughs> Blue tea pageant, top secret, absolutely delicious. <laughs> this is sea party, because that's what mermaids have. Oh, you beautiful, beautiful, soft, delicate creature. I'm going to put you in the eyes too. Oops, a bit too much water. Water on you, sorry. Oh, took that off. I'll have to do that one again. Uh, so this is Aquanaut. And again, you know, do we need two? Yes, we do. Well, like I said, you might not, but I do. And I'm making the colours, so kind of is my way. Or, oh, this is another gorgeous one. Look at that. Um, this is Laguna Tick. And we will finish on this roll on Gem Bold and it's a Gem Jade Green. I was thinking of jades. Oh, I did water again. Poops. Is my Dame Judy, is this the problem? I think Dame Judy is getting a bit... Um, juicy. So I'm just going to give her a little squeeze out. There we go. Sorry to manhandle you. My little sponge there. Sorry to manhandle you. Like that Dame Judy drench. But I'm, I'm, I'm helping you out, love. Uh, now we're going into mint condition. Did I think I was genius? Yes. Beautiful, soft, little minty green. Oh, look what the colours are doing there. Yum. Um, this is Frond in Need. <laughs> uh, frond green. These are very little light greens. They've got a little bit of opacity to them as well. You can see that in the pan. Uh, so they've got, they're not a translucent one, these ones. You can see that um, when they've got that little bit of translucency. Sometimes people refer, refer to them as a chalky watercolour and in fact that is exactly correct. That doesn't make them less um, fabulous or less, because that's gouache. You were going, we're, it's, it's giving it a pastel colour because it's had white added to it. So it is what it is, it's, and it's rather glorious. I'm trying very hard to not put, uh, let them mix together yet, because they, they can do the mixing with each other over here, you see. And what are we up to? So that was Green-Eyed Monster. Weed, love that, was one I just did. This is Tropical Palm, because it's cool.
Oh, the eyes are very nice colour. This is Tremendous. So if you've got any questions for me, please ask. And the paper that I'm using is um, a flat, uh, the flat side of the watercolour journal. Colours pop a bit more on a, on a paper with a bit of texture. Um, and because of the variety, so it's more of an optical illusion, but it definitely is a thing. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're up to that one. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Yeah. Now we're getting into our warmer greens. So this is Inner Pickle. And we've got uh, Leaf of Absence. See, puns make me laugh. I know some people say they hate puns, but uh, whatever. How can you hate words, like, you know, fun words like that? I mean, you can say hateful words. Do you hate combinations of words, I suppose? This colour is Sage Advice. So, again, it's one of the very soft ones. And... Strangely, they may end up being your most used colours. This is Hat Pea. This is a cute little pea green. Almost a neon. And this is Lime All Yours. Another little go here. Oh, and... Let's get some of the. Oh, we can let these connect here at the top. These beautiful colours. That'll look nice there. And I might connect a little bit with this incredible pink. And then it can be a mauve's uh, kind of moment over here. And we've got a little pointillism kind of little effect going on. I think of it as stained glass. And oh, let's do a little bit of blue. Which one? We'll do this one. Because these will mix nicely with each other. Just to let these sort of colours go rolling around and around with each other. Now I'm going to. So that is all of our colours swatched out our euphoria and then I'm going I want to finish this off and turn this into something uh, do the pans come out yes you can pull them out you come they're on a double-sided tape a really strong double-sided tape so you can pull these out put them on a magnet and do put them in a different tin because you might want to put them in with another bigger collection or whatever it is that you want to do uh, some people are very clever and they use, I'm just grabbing something, um, you can use this uh, as a watercolour tin and um, you put magnets on the back of this and you've got a beautiful tin to travel with. You can put some pencils in here, you can have your watercolours in here, you could move, oh, would we be able to fit? Maybe. Do you know what? I might even have to try that at some point. Uh, because we can. F this is 11 colours wide and I think we can fit each set on a row there. Gosh, do you think? This is 12. This is 12 colours a row, actually, 12. So I could... Um, there and then... You know, you know what? I think we could almost fit the whole lot in the one. Oh my gosh, that would be the year of before. I'm going to do that later. Um, and then you just use double sided tape or um, some super glue and put magnets on the back. I actually used to have little packets of flat magnets um, and they've got the sticker stuff on the back and you just need to peel them off and stick them on. 
Um, but yes, these are just stuck on in here. Um, and that's just, it's to, it's to strip away all the weight and any extra cost so that you've got, everything is on the important thing, which is the watercolours. Um, because as you see, I don't even use the tin, even though the tins that I have are gorgeous. Uh, I need more colours. I need all the things together. But that's just my preference. Uh, and then I've put these in a, a vintage tin. It doesn't even close properly. I can't even really fit them in. But, and I'll probably cut my hand off and get tetanus one day because it is pretty old and cruddy. But do you know what? I could even treat myself and trim this off so it actually fits in there properly. Going to quickly do that. Look, happy Christmas, Jane. Merry birthday. Happy New Year. To you love. You, you're looking. You're, you're looking after yourself. Bye. <laughs> Let's see if I cut it too close at all. Anyway, whatever. Oh my gosh! Now it fits. I'm going to put some blue tack on it and let it squelch in there because I'm not I don't mix my colours in here usually I mix them on any surface other than the mixing tray <laughs> including the, the pan itself much to the horror of some people <gasps> oh my gosh look at that I'm gonna be able to close my little tin oh wait a minute what's that Blue tack's gone all funny. Oh. And I mainly have that there for when I'm painting on screen so that you know what colour it is that I'm using because you do get used to whatever. I know these all look like black, but I know that these are the browns, we're going into the blue, and then we're going into my blacks. So some are actually black, but... <laughs> uh, all wonderful and nice oh I'm so delighted with myself that's been flapping around and getting in the way for a year okay uh, sorry let's just do this uh, could I layer the watercolor with the incredible pink pen oh yes of course of course layer the a watercolor with the incredible pen. The incredible pen will that incredible ink, depending what the ink is that you've got inside the pen, it will run because it's not a waterproof ink. You can put in the tattoo ink, these are waterproof inks. You can put into your pen a waterproof ink like the pigment of imagination in the back. Most inks, are, unless they say it's waterproof, they're not. Um, and uh, f this is waterproof, this is waterproof, but some of the tattoo inks, like the yellow, the treasure map, um, uh, gangplank, they are, just yellows are very difficult to make. Not What colour did I put on my brush? I don't even know what I'm doing. Typical. Um, now, because I'm not beholden to anything, I'm just going to use my... I have, there's no, I'm mixed media, so I don't have to just only use one thing. I better use my good one. That's well and really trashed. And I just want to build up to a brighter white. And sometimes it's the brush, it's the white paint pen. Uh, sometimes with the brush, sometimes it's more of the music like this is the most opaque and mine might use this to do the actual, so I'll give that a shake now to, for the little iris drops and stuff uh, and a little bit of this as well. So this will help build up the volume. So I've got the softest pink, it's the softest white, sorry, was my watercolour white and I actually even had the cream in there too. And then I've got a little bit of that one. And now I've got the brightest white right next to the uh, iris. So even this is help building volume. But I think I'll add a few more. 
colours from here. Let's get, this is in the pink, or do I want more of my coral? I'm just going to mix these two. So I've got, these are the peachy colours, but I might add a little bit of, like a flush to the cheek, like a little bit of pink, uh, just over the top. <clears throat> and you can see this has got a little bit of opacity. Uh, you can see that in the pan. And some colours are naturally a little bit more opaque, and like as the pigment, and some are very translucent. Um, and they're just like these turquoises, they're just very translucent, but it's a whole different colour when it's got white into it as well. I'm just going to add, I've got my finer brush here. Well, that's a little bit wet there, but I'm just going to add that uh, pupils back in. And I might make this other eye a little bit greener. Mix those two colours. And then this, at the moment, this is just a face. It's peering around, flapping around, zooming around in a colour, a euphoria. <laughs> but I think we need some definition, some defining characteristics. Oh, I think sugar high. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yummy. She still looks a little bit um, like angry. So I'm going to use a bit of... Uh... Oh, actually, if I put that there, like that, we can see. Um, so I think Earthly Delights. Um... Oh, I'm just going to change the pitch of her eyes as well. So this is a nice uh, dark brown. And this, uh, I might get put it, no, buffoonery. Let's do buffoonery. Uh, just to add a little bit of contouring and because this is watercolor just add a bit of water to soften the lines uh, Beijing as well why just beige when you can Beijing We can let the colours layer a little bit. She looks more serious on screen than she does in, when I look at her with my eyeballs. Right. I wonder what it is. Is it the lip? This bottom lip is like, mm, mm. she's pouting a little bit. So, uh, just going to add a little bit of water and just soften that. Uh, that might not erase completely, but it will soften. Oh, but I've also used my dip pen there. Okay, so hmm, that's just the way it is. I'm not using a bit of feeling cherished and move the focus of the lip back this way. Angus went off for a windsurf and since he's left the wind has just dropped off completely and uh, I hope it's still windy down there though. Now, I've had a, quite a lot of red and pink into here and it might be a bit much but that can actually look quite fetching. So uh, we'll just see what happens and I might get my beijing again and just this little shadow up and mm. see how um, fun it is to work on these colors 
with um, on that waterproof background. Uh, it's just um, some sort of genius. I'm telling you right now. Mm, mm, mm. Or any of the neutrals from this set, Just that's just the example I've used here. Right. Now let's... Uh, Look, if you're, if you're not going to self-deputise genius status every so often, once a year maybe, all right, uh, who else are going to do it for you? So every so often you just have to self-genius uh, announce that. Now, I'm into frilly harlequin collars, so I'm just into them. And I, I'm not even going to apologise to you for it, so that's what's happening. They are fun to draw, and I like them. I think they look cool. I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you why. I had a poster of a Harlequin as a kid, maybe, in my room. Sarah Moon, you know. I love those big-eyed sort of girls and things and that Sarah Moon whimsical. Uh, what's the like the big eyes um, of artist? I've forgotten. Anyway, she's starting to have her little moment. And I might go too... See, purple can go over the sides, but this maybe this side of the hair is going to be... With the blue, I'm just going to use this one because it makes me very happy. So, um, might just make this bluer in here and this greener out here to sort of make a bit of differentiation. I'm not quite sure that's what I want, but uh, let's just start with that. Now this pink's just not going to be dry, bright enough, so I might use a bit of, um, and I told you that, I, that this has a, a, a bonus pink in it, right? A bonus pan. This can have more yellows out here, and then this could have a little bit more orange on the inside and pink. Ah, maybe we'll let that be purple when they mix. And I might, let's use watercolour pencil just to sharpen up some little details. I'm going to use really dark blue. Maybe brown. Maybe a bit of Zambuca black. Just grabbing out some little shadowy colours. <gasps> Maybe I'll use purple actually. Um... So which of your pens can I draw with a black ink that's waterproof? Okay, you can put waterproof ink in any of the pens. So the waterproof tattoo ink is in the little skull bottle, tattoo, sailors, etc. Um, you put this in any of the fountain pens. There's two different fountain pen nibs. There's a rollerball nib. There's a technical nib. Uh, you can also put it in the new Dr. Ink pens. Oh, well, let's use this actually. Um, you can put that in the Dr. Ink pens. 
Um, you can, so I've got that black tattoo ink, which is waterproof in my tech pen. I've got them in my um, Dr. Ink pens. I'll show you those in a sec. Plus, you can put all sorts of different inks in your Dr. Ink pens. So I've also got the waterproof neon in there, which is that, this tattoo ink. And the tattoo inks are in 12, and we just released the next 12, 13, 14, is that 15 colours? That can't be right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, yeah, 15. Oh my gosh, okay, yes. Um, <laughs> so this is the black uh, tattoo ink in here. So this is waterproof. And these little pens, this is be perfect for labelling because it's very, very fine. And the tech pen as well. This is the technical Funton pen. Just adore them. Adore. Uh, or if you just want a pen that's already got the ink in it and it's waterproof, that's this set. I just treated myself to a new set because I'd wandered off with some in this direction and that direction. Uh, so this has got brush tips, um, chisel tips for calligraphy, that sort of thing, super fine micron tips and a super brush as well. It's just a different type of brush very very fine and this is more of a flexible uh, nib like this so the doctor ink is like a super super fine version even of the finishing line pens except you can put any ink you want in it um, doctor ink is refillable uh, you've got uh, we've got a little insert set you can get as well um, If you're going to put the same colour in, you just can reload it like that. And the other one is the Incredible Pen, um, which is here. Um, I've completely, I, I hardly touched my Incredible Pen lately, I've got to say very sadly neglected because I, I'm kind of more into this or well, not kind of I am and uh, but, you know use whatever well see now I don't want to do, use black I and mean, I've got lots of other colors and you can mix your colors too so we've been mixing colors here in the videos let's do a video for the website about these haven't done it yet and the set comes with stickers so that you can label what ink you've put in there I've even got a few little spare stickers there um, and you can yeah put whatever ink you like not acrylic inks just whatever fountain pen friendly ink and you can put sparkling inks in there but the sparkle won't go up and won't come back out because it's got that foam uh, inside it's just not that type of pen um, but for anything sparkling inks, the best thing for them is the glass dip pen. Just can't. Uh... Oh, well, you know. Wait a minute. Shiver me timbers and uh, shiver yo ho ho. So that's the mix. I'll use those two. Um, so these are just fantastic little handy devices. And easy as pie to fill. But if you're not into inks, then, you know, this is just not, this can be a journey for later. Might be what gets you into your journey. Oh, I love them. That's my love them song. <laughs> And this just adds to the little sketchy look to say, hey, we're not serious here. This is me fun, having fun. And I love my life. She's just not complete in a little bit of highlight 
Oh, poor little one. They put her to bed dirty. I'm sorry, little swan. Oh, that's better. So the little mark she made was very grey. Not her usual little self. So this is a very strange little thing called the white swan pen. I'm doing that so you can just see the weird little tip. I have pens that actually have a finer tip. The pinpoint paint pen. But the, the, the reason is this, I, you have to shake it up to get the opacity right. So it's just a, a one step more work, but it's the finest of the fine. And it's very, once you've got it going, it's the most opaque. Um, it's got Italian pigment in it. It's just top of the wazza of this sort of little creature. This little guy, if you're into white pens, you'll totally get it. You have to have them all because they all do something slightly different. It is a joy beyond comprehension to be able to see around the pen when you're working on such a fine thing as an eye. This, I mean, it's not covering up that much, but until you use one, I, it's just, that's why I love this weird little thing. And very often I work, because I can, I have full vision of my thing. I've got no art supply blocking it, um, which might sound very odd to some people, but it's just, it is what it is. It's just my experience. It's my opinion. And yes, I just, I, I can't even... just it's very happiness it's just very happiness very happiness <sighs> and in the world in the state that it's in at the moment any little happiness that you can grab for yourself whenever you can do it it's very good it's very good indeed I want a difference a little bit of light in the eyes makes so anyway, do you need, and that's not all the white pens, I could have a thousand white pens, I'm more than happy <laughs> to use them all. Um, mm, there you go. <laughs> right, when are the new dip pens coming? Well, they have their hand made and I did some sketches of crazy ideas and they are uh, off to work on them <laughs> and to create some things but of course the mermaid uh, tail one of course uh, with the little mermaid wave uh, stand which again was just from a funny little drawing um, they are each one is handmade when you're using when you're using the glass pens and because you're talking about it now you maybe want to use it so just moving my ink out of the way just a bit of not. look at those beautiful colors okay so uh, what I've got here these are gods and monsters inks these are the uh, technically they're called a chroma chromatography ink because they change the chroma changes, the colour changes, but it's especially effective on certain types of paper like Tomo River, the lev our levitation paper, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to grab my little dip pen and Hydra. And then inside these, oh, maybe Pluto, I might tighten up the deep. Pluto. This is almost black, but it's not black. Or Cyclops. This is a really dark grey. I might go this one. Could also mix a colour. But what I've got in these are pigment pebbles. Mm. So, and pigment pebbles are these, wherever they are, here they are. These little creatures. And you just can drop the glitter, the sparkle, the eyes delight into the ink and you make your own fancy 
addition so you can put whatever colour you want in there. Do you know what? I'm just going to do this. Um, you can also just paint straight from the little doodly-doo. Water as dirty as anything. Because I've already started on this, I'm going to do it to show you. <gasps> See? Mm. It is better if it's got ink or you've got um, making into watercolour with the gum Arabic. It just gives the mica a little bit more staying power to the paper. Should you be rubbing your paper? No, you shouldn't. But we do, especially if it's sparkly or nice. I can't help it. We can't help it. Um, so I've got uh, other colours in here already. And the Cyclops ink is a grey. And where is a little pan? I just need a little mixing palette. So this is a little mini mixer uh, palette. Normally it's clear. Mine's obviously got a bit of ink on it. I'm just mixing. I just want that blue that I just put in there as well to come to the party. Oh, stop it. Love clear palettes. Very important we put the lid back on because otherwise we throw the ink everywhere. Everyone knows that's how it works. Look at that. Okay. So that was a bit of pigment pebble. And if you're new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll just quickly show you. So this is one of the pigment pebbles. One of the sets. It's got uh, five colours in it. There's three different sets. Each one has a different set. Beautiful, cute little box. Beautiful, cute little thing. Comes with the shells so you can make your own watercolours with them. I try and think of everything. Um, and oh, wait a minute! I wasn't going to use my brush. I bought out my Bloomin' dip pen. That's where we started. So this isn't really how you meant to use a dip pen, but this will work, okay? Um, actually, if I put a little bit of water on it, I'm just going to try and <laughs> roll up enough ink in my pen to use it. But the more intelligent way would be to put it in a little vial. And now I have a little, hopefully, oh there we go, um, a little fine inky line. And if I want a, a broader one, hello brush, oh you know what, this will work too. Brush it up, paint it on the brush, oh that's easier. Smart. See how smart I am? I'm being sarcastic. Because I just flicked paint all over her face. So, of course I did. Oh well. Now, because I've done that, uh, I just do this. Just roll it, roll it, roll it. And in fact, because that is... Uh, Make sure I've got grey on my brush. That pigment um, of imagination in the background. I might be able to just lift that off a little bit. Nah. Ooh, that worked very well. So we started off with. Did we use a dip pen at the beginning? I don't think so, but we could have. Just using this to add a little bit of definition. And because it's got a bit of sparkle in it, it's Quite a lovely way of adding a bit of definition, really. Zorro singing a song. And I'll show you. Might not be able to see the sparkle yet, but don't worry. You will. So when you're using the dip pen, if you run out of ink, just turn it, and you'll get um, the gravity will help. Just because you've got all these grooves in it, the gravity will just help it. So these will be it'll be a couple of months, won't be too far away, but the designs are gorgeous. I watched a film last night called Rebel Moon. 
oh my goodness, it was a bit full on. Some of it was a bit unnecessary, but I, sp I suppose it made us hate the characters. I just don't like um, young girls being taken advantage of. It just makes me feel completely ill. So, as as it does with most people, it's why they include it. But uh, I don't like animal cruelty in movies either. It's unnecessary. I get it. I don't need to. Don't need to labour the point. Um, but it was if you can what if you can get through that. So if I was watching that with some family members, they, the telly would have been turned off. It's too much. It was pretty. It was good. Sort of Star Wars ish, but not. But way nastier. I wonder why Star. Why Disney turned it down as a Star Wars? Was it because of that? So this is still Cyclops. Now if I wanted to do add a little bit of pigment pebble to uh, my watercolours, I could certainly do that as well. And the way I would do that is get a little pigment pebble. I've got a little bit of gold here. And do you know what? I might put it on here. Do you know what? I could actually make a little pan and scrunch it in. But let me get, I suppose clear, clean water would be better. Just excuse me for one second. I'm just going to pour out. I'm just going to get clean water. Um... Take a minute. Give it a little spit it out like at the dentist. There you go. Has anyone else got trouble here? Yeah. Yes. Oh Nicole, that's wonderful to hear. Yes, experimentation, especially with mixed media because I mean, that's what it's, it's part of what it's all about. It's not what it's all about, but how can it be about one thing when it's about everything? But it's certainly, um, it's just a wonderful thing. So I've put a little bit of pigment pebble uh, on my pan here and I've just added that water to it. I'm going to add, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of gum arabic to it just It'll help the gold stick to it. This watercolour will help it anyway, but it's just as a little extra overkill. Why not set myself up for success? So all I've done is put, I've dipped a skewer into it and got a drip. And I'm using that. And it has a bit more viscosity than actual water. And it actually feels like it dries a little bit sticky if you, if you just had it um, there. You can actually use gum arabic as a masking fluid of sorts, of sorts, uh, on your paper too. You can paint with it, paint over it, and the paint won't stick to where the gum arabic is quite. So I'm going to um, dissolve. In fact, if I'd use the gum arabic that kind of binder instead of water to just dissolve this a little bit. Um, that, that would be better, but I've got both, doesn't matter. Uh, so that's going to be like a little gold blob there. Just get it off my brush as much as I can. Onto the little hue for, isn't the name funny? Euphoria. Euphoric. Right, that's a pun. Now let's add this gold. So I'll get 
what's to do with this guy? Let's see what we get. I'm going to get a bit of uh, tickled pink here. This glorious, glorious pink. Pop it there. I'm just going to drag a bit of my gold into it. A little bit of a different colour. <gasps> Do you know those moments where you're just so glad you are who you are and you do what you do? I'm having one of those. <laughs> mm, just happiness. I might do silver in a blue over here. I'll put one of these little, oh, these glowing pinkies are nice too. I'm just going to put a bit of a glowing pink here. And... Let's see, why not just do every experiment there is? This is how I create. It's the whole idea is everything goes with everything mixed media. And then we've also got the world of collage. We have the world of stamps, stencils, so tools. Um, we have inks. We have watercolour, we have pencils, crayons, whatever else I come up with. You'd think all the inks would be enough, wouldn't you? All the pencils, all the paint markers, but no, no, no. Uh -oh, we need everything. So I want to use this. This is very, very pretty and iridescent, this colour on other colours. Uh, sitting on white paper is boring. But it's beautiful as a little shimmer. Uh, especially on faces. We can give her a little highlight. Give her a little late 2000s <laughs> Me mega highlight on the eyebrows here on the nose. Remember that trend? I'm glad that's over. That was a lot. Now you won't be able to see any of that, but hopefully when I move the paper you can see it glistening there. And you can see the sparkle in the eyes. So don't forget you've got the prompts uh, in the group. We've got our new Euphoria watercolour set. What else did I show you? A bit of pigment pebbles. Uh, just gorgeous. See in there the little watercolours I've made with them. And you can mix the colours. You can mix them with these. Uh, or you can pop them into inks. Any of our uh, inks. I'm always going for the gold, going for gold, but those colours there are going to look gorgeous uh, on the colours. Whereas this isn't going to stand out as much, it just makes me feel happy. Anyway, I can go on and on and on, and we've got a bit of a Harlequin, uh, what would we even call this? And A Harlequin... Um, <laughs> A euphoric harlequin. A heliquin. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, look, <laughs> Nicole says, art is like falling in love over and over and over again. I think that's the type of person that we are, Nicole. If you are like that as well, we're birds of a feather and we... It's just a type of person that adores art supplies. It's because we can see the possibility in them. Some people, it what really gets them about their art supplies is knowing the nuances of just one supply and using as little art supplies as possible. That's, you know, a different type of or artist or a different phase in your life or whatever. 
and none of it's right and none of it's wrong. And if you're telling people the way they do things in art is wrong, you need to have a little seat. You need to take several seats. You need to take about 50 seats and sit all the way down and just concentrate on what you're doing. Because some of us, uh, you know, it's, it's the art supplies are what <laughs> triggers them on. And you've heard me say it before, but I don't even really create art supplies for everyone else. I'm doing this for myself. <laughs> because this is what I want to do and what I like to do. <sighs> and I'm just an unstoppable force. Oh, art supplies. <laughs> <It's too true. laughs> I've just spent the last few days designing oh my whole a whole new collection. Um, I'm just I've never had so much fun in my life, and I feel very grateful that I've got the journey on, uh, this journey that I'm on with all of you. And, uh, yeah. Oh, these are so good. So this was, um, this is Shiver Me Timbers. Oh, I thought it was the one that I'd mixed. Okay, well, that's even better. And this is Shiver Yo Ho Ho. So this was a mix of the two. So I can add this a little bit into the lips and maybe into the nose. A little bit more of that colour. I do all my everyday writing with these things too. Uh, the nib is really resilient because it's it's hard, like it's a a hard um, nib. What you can do is, like if other pigments and things can block it up a little bit, but all you do is just knock them off or if at worst water, just a little tight or damp little paper, whatever, and you'll get um, whatever it is blocking it. As with all felt tippy things though, and fountain pens to a certain extent, the, the way the ink uh, looks in the bottle or when you wash, you know, put it on with a big paintbrush, you've got a big thick wave. It's going to look different when it's coming out because this is its finest, its finest hour. So it's going to look much lighter, um, sometimes different when it's in its lightest version. This is Will-O-Wisp, which is in the same story as the Nymph ink. Uh, in the fountain pen. I'm just going to add a little bit of details with this too. Just I don't have this colour. It's just slightly darker. So I can just add up a little bit of nuance with this. Oh, she's got a little blockage in there. I can feel it. Oh, the other thing is it's empty. <laughs> ah, that is funny. Okay, so I thought maybe it was a blockage or something. No, she's empty. Empty. I can fill her up. Oh, I love it. Um, so I'll just do that. But you don't need to watch me do that. So I shall say goodbye and say thank you for joining me. And... Uh, Oh, you can go, but I'm just going to fill this little guy. I just love filling up my bands. So I can do it with the injection method. I can do all sorts of things, but this, um, I think I've got enough ink in here. I can just do it. This is the simplest way of doing it. Oh, but I haven't got enough ink. I'm going to have to get properly organised. Yeah. It's not quite, I haven't got quite enough ink in there. Sometimes you can just do it through the pen itself if you've got enough ink in the actual glass jar. Just makes life very exciting, that's all. But all I have to do is take that off, uh, wind this down, pop that in. Wind it back up. Yeah, there we go. Just draw that ink back up. Put it back in the fountain pen. So I could do that with my incredible ink or whatever. Sometimes I use the ink conversion 
tool or like the little needle you can use a syringe to fill the dripper up most important thing put the lid back on tight, turn it tight oh and there she goes Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Very, very fun. Um, okay, let's see what I'm doing. Oh, that's a nice idea. Oh, Penny, thank you. Oh, this is the neon pink. Mm. Bit of neon pink over things. Just makes the world better. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. That's very nice of you to say that Penny, like spending all my free time, I've been very uh, relaxing. Um, I say that, but I've worked a lot. When my mum was here, I've just kept going. Uh, and we just did a lot of art. And mine turned into testing, testing, testing. And uh, things that I've been wanting to get to for a while. And just really planning out uh, stories and ideas for the whole year um, with uh, art supplies and how they relate to each other and what, what do we actually need, how do we keep them, because those of us with a lot of art supplies, that's very important. Factor is uh, like uh, organising them. And displaying them so they're not overwhelming, but so that it's it's joyful. So I'm always thinking of. Um, I'm not going to lie, my own joy because this is very joyful for me. And if you don't have that, the tattoo pink. And a dot drink. I, I don't know what else to say to you. You're just not starting the year off right. No, I'm joking. Am I? Am I? No, I'm not. I'm not. Look, that's her body. <laughs> that's the. I want to spray this here, but I'm not going to. <gasps> Am I? Jane, no. No, stop it. Just needed a bit more neon. See how this pink is different to the tickled pink? Oh, she's more like Bordello, actually. She's getting into that colour. Okay, yes, yeah, she is. That is heaven. That in the dot drink as well. Thank you. Thank you. That is my message. Obviously, you need these. And she needs a body. But maybe I'll do that next time. Or maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that now. I'm just going to keep it simple. Just a little Harley Quinn body. Just a little hint. Because who, it's the year of colour. It's 2023, year of colour. And colour is happiness. Or. As the pencils. Oh, I forgot to give my mum one of these when she was here. Oh, that's not mine. That's the one from Japan. Okay. Huh. Colour is everything. Colour is everything. See, it's got all the colours in there. I'm having one of those moments where I'm just happy to be me. And this is making me very happy. 
I'm gonna do this up here as well. I'm gonna do it in a sing song voice. You're here. So and I'm just I'm twisting and twisting and twisting, getting the <sighs> Sorry, that was my mind being blown. Usually I use this to start the drawing off. I don't know if I've used that like this before. But on this colour, colour, colour and then this colour. Mm. It's just turning up with purple. Um, you can't, I've just got so much going on here. But look, there's all yellow and orange and it's always going in the same rotation of colours. Whereas this one, you might have this one from us. Uh, this is the Rainbow Artist's favourite colour, Rainbow. This is a different type. This has got chips of pencil. So it's random. The colour is really random. Same, it's great though for um, an initial sketch. It just sort of disappears for some reason. It just does. Whereas this is uh, the same colour, that red, yellow, orange. It's, it's the same colour all the way through. So you get a predictable rain, more of a predictable rainbow of colours. Woo! I'm just spinning. And because you've, you're doing that, you can use it um, and then turn it a little and then turn it a little. So you, you've got all the colours happening in there. Good for travel, right? But this is also very soft and pigmented. So it's just a nicer, a thicker line. And this one, even though this is a thicker pencil, it's finer. But it's a different type of pencil. It's nowhere near as uh, pigmented as that one. So this is great for initial sketches. We really want it to disappear, and it does. Uh, and the other one is more for, I think it's more of a special effects kind of gal. Like, interesting. Just, I think on camera it just does look like normal lines, but each line has got seven colours in it. So, specialness. Okay, my friends. Well, these are on the website. Don't forget, um, they a fantastic price for all of these colours. We were really hard on getting this. Great little case. You can take the pans out, put them into other pans, other things. They're not half pans. They're a bit smaller. Um, plenty of colour in there uh, to have lots of fun with watercolour. Unique colours, uh, as you can see, um, than what we have in our the rest of our collection. So it's a great little addition. Fantastic as a starter kit for someone starting with watercolour. Um, or if you've got visitors to your studio, um, or you want to get a little one or a friend into art, something like this because it's so many colours and people don't have to know how to mix colours because that's a learning curve all of its own and sometimes you just want to do stuff and this is what the, the idea behind this is to allow you to do that just get into it and enjoy it and not have to be an expert or feel like you have to be any kind of expert you just there are the colours off you go bam um and there's a lot of joy for that. And then once you are a watercolour aficionado or you think, yeah, yeah, I can do watercolour, watercolours for me, then you can move into the colour library and these ones, sort of like a, a bridge between worlds, the world before watercolour and the world after watercolour, the euphoria of watercolour. I, th I think everyone should experience the euphoria of watercolour. And yes, and the paint box part, paint box is from, um, like, oh, I've got original paint boxes. That's what they used to be called, like this sort of thing, you know, as a just an entree into a world of colour. A very nice world. Okay, well, I've get off my soapbox, my colour box or whatever it was that I was just on, and 
and I hope you have a wonderful New Year's. Are they water soluble? Which ones? Sorry, Penny, I'm not sure which are water soluble, but the watercolors sure are. Okay, my friends. Um, was it pigment pebbles? Yes, they're part of the watercolour world. Anything with gum arabic, anything watercolory, water soluble. Tattoo ink, like a tattoo on your body. Not going anywhere. I don't even know if lasers will remove that uh, ink. <laughs> so if, depending on what ink you put in things, that depends whether they're water soluble or not. But yes, water soluble, watercolour. Oh, fabulousness. Isn't that cute? Eh, so cute. Okay, I'll do a little screenshot of that because it all looks so nice. And I'll see you. I'm not sure when I'll see you, just whenever. We just go to my previous schedule where it's just when I feel like doing a, saying hello. Happy New Year's, everyone. <laughs> oh, the rainbow pencil. No, it's not water-soluble. It's a regular coloured pencil. Yay. Bye.